flex and you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really want to miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little. Get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content. Got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't want to miss a second of this HT content. Everybody think they got something to say. So it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table. But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn your back until you start try again, huh? Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. What's up, everybody? What's going on? How you doing? How your mama doing? How your Sharon doing? Hopefully, everybody is having a good day, a good Sunday, a blessed Sunday, and are getting ready for the new week to start. Now, as you can see by the title of the show, we done found out that R. Kelly kills Mr. Step in the Name of Love is uh possibly going to be facing some more charges um and this time along with bribery um there's also going to be most likely some charges for underage boys um not only are they alleging that he has uh sexually been with underage boys more than one um, but also has some of the boys filming their sessions and filming themselves with each other, with different men. Just like with, you know, the females when he had them, um, the younger ones and some of the older ones, he would have them go out and try to recruit, you know. You know how I go with a lot of pedos. They find they some, some young people, um, they groom them, uh, nurture them, take care of them, support them, and then they talk them into recruiting some more uh some more uh cheering or young young adults. But but the thing about it is normally um how this works is people who eventually become recruiters, they eventually get put on the back burner because they age out, just kind of like foster care. They kind of age out of the system. So um, let me show you guys this uh, video real quick. Some of y'all probably already seen it. A lot of y'all who uh, be staying up on the news and, you know, especially the trending news and everything. But let me play this video for you guys real quick. Oh, let's see. Let me make it bigger. Okay. All right. Let me know if you guys cannot hear it. Did I start it back from the beginning? So Mr. Kelly had an infection in his foot. They had to pull off his toenail to treat it. And uh, he's in a, a walking boot because of that. Uh, he didn't want to come today because in the process, when you're handcuffed to other inmates and so forth, someone could step on your foot. If they step on your foot and your toenail has been pulled off, it could be quite painful. We're working with the marshal service and uh, they've been very helpful. They're saying that, that his health concerns get addressed. Nothing is, is you know life-threatening or anything like that, but there are things that if you were free, if you were out on bond like you should be, you'd be able to see a doctor and you'd be able to have the things addressed. He hasn't been convicted of anything. He should be able to get adequate health care. And we filed a motion to dismiss some of the counts, uh, the counts dealing with obstruction, uh, chiefly because we think that the statute of limitations has been blown. We also think that legally the counts are insufficient, that as a matter of law, they aren't going to be able to, to prove it. The allegations don't comply with, with the allegations they need to make in order to, to make a case for obstruction. So we have, a, we have a trial date here in April. We have a trial date in New York in June. We're certainly preparing for those, both those trials. Uh, whether they go ahead or not, I don't know. Um, that that's you know that's something for way down the road. But we have to prepare. Judges have set trial dates.
Okay, okay. So, what the hell? He got some toe, toenail fungus issues going on here. Um, there's something else I want to show you too. Okay, here it is. Okay, so basically, basically that video, um, that, that's the reason. See, that, that video was prior to why he couldn't come to court last time. Um, I had pulled up the website of the current recent uh, charges that they are alleging against him. And for some reason, that video posted up. But that that's neither here nor there. Hopefully, his foot is doing fine now. But anyway, that's why he couldn't appear in court last time. Now, in New York, they have federal prosecutors um, basically... Uh, alleging more alle allegations because the whole criminal thing behind him right now with the uh, most of the charges is basically sexual trafficking. That's that's like the case, sexual trafficking case. So they're saying right now that he had um, contact with underage boys in addition to girls, and they want to um, show this information or present this information to the jurors in his upcoming sex trafficking trial. They want to add those additional um, underage boys into the case. So that's what they're trying to do right now. Um, they said it's a wide range of additional allegations, but all not new charges. Um, they filed on Friday. What's today? Sunday. So um, the jury selection is going to start on August 9th. It's going to be in the New York federal court. Um, and to this day, to this day, he still denies being with anybody underage. He denies any of the allegations, any of the charges of abuse, um, sex trafficking, um, all that information. I mean, all that stuff, he's still denying that. I don't know how he could be denying that still, though, because we know for a fact, like, we know for a fact some of the young people that he were with, like, including Aaliyah. I mean, this man cannot, I don't know why, but he, for some reason, has the nerves to basically, he's not claiming this. But with so many unspoken words, he's basically saying, okay, everybody knows I was with Aaliyah. Everybody knows we got married. Everybody knows her family got it in all. You know, a lot of people know or allege that her family was paid off. We know that. Aaliyah was underage. She was like 15, 14, something like that. That was the first one. Then there was several after that. The girl that he peed on. I mean, she was like 14 years old as well. And then um, the one that was going to all his court, his, uh, court, court cases. Why well, I can't never remember that girl name. If y'all can remember her name, um, hold up. Girl who went to R. Kelly's trial. What is her name? Geronda. That's her name. Geronda Pace. Deronda Pace. Now, um, Deronda Pace, she was 15 years old. Um, she was a sophomore um, in, one, in Chicago, in the suburbs. She would cut school every day to attend R. Kelly's trial, which was at the time the 14 counts of making child porn. And that was involving the girl that he was pissing on. Okay, so that's her name, Geronda Pace. So that's another one. She was younger. She was with him for a long time. She was actually part of that Lifetime movie network, Surviving R. Kelly as well. I'm sure y'all probably remember her on that. Yoli B said, yes, this is this is so very, very deep. And I'm like, every time you turn around, they put some more charges on this man. They finding out new information on this man. People coming forward. But his biggest thing that's looks like it's going to be hurting him in this whole trial is just like just like before with the, the young girl that he had urinated on back in the day he records everything like and that's how most pedos are they record everything they have to have all this stuff in file they have to have like all this memorabilia you know what i'm saying if it's not recording it's usually like some of their underwear um some of their like uh stuff that they use in their hair like barrettes headband um what do they call them things them squeegee them uh 
scrunchies, scrunchies, you know, something like that. People, they like to keep something um, of memorabilia, you know, and his one thing was he would have a tripod and he would have people recording. He would have people recording him. He would have uh, people recording other people doing things. And so that's what these new um, allegations are staring from. So they are with boys. And even though a lot of people's like, well, they were 16, 17, they still were underage. I mean, if you still don't think that R. Kelly is sick, if you think that if he were to be released, that he would not continue the, along the same patterns that he is, I don't know what the hell. I don't know what. I, I, I I don't know. You said it's called trophies. Yes, they yes, remember by your trophies. Yes, that's it. That's it. Trophies. Um, but yeah, they like to keep uh things to remind them of who it was they did something to. You know what I mean? And so boys, it's it is crazy because we did a lot of um a lot of y'all been following me since my other YouTube cha channel, Times Prime Time TV, where we uh Basically, it was doing commentary on the from the very beginning, uh, from the Lifetime Movie Network, Surviving R. Kelly, Deronda Pay Story, Jocelyn. I mean, all that. We was discussing all that over there um, before we started over here on the hood table. And one thing for sure is that a lot of these people um, that he was with, again, a lot of the younger ones, he would allegedly, allegedly have them recruiting other young people and it's very very sickening like people look at it like oh well they were 17 they're old enough you know things like that they are still underage they 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 still under that's still somebody's child like how would you like it if your child um was being enticed and groomed and um you know by somebody like r kelly like kills mm -mm. No, nope, I think he needs to be locked up forever, and that's just my um, feelings. I, I felt that from the very beginning. Um, I thought he was a sicko. I thought he was nasty. He was a freak ever since, ever since Aaliyah. Like, ever since Aaliyah, when he was, like, messing around with her, and he was over age, and she was only, like, 14, 15. And to hear all the stories about her sleeping in his bed while they on a tour bus, and all those people knowing all about it. Now, my thing is, as far as like all the people, where are the where are the other people? Where are the other charges? Like this man literally is going to take the fall for everything. Is that how this is going to work out, or do you think that they will eventually start pulling in these um these staff members of his, his road managers, his security guards? I mean, so many people were involved in him being able to do this run this type of operation for years and years and years and years ever since Aaliyah and probably for all we know shit it could have been some way before Aaliyah and then the thing about it is he keeps okay all the ones that he, he had got with in the past they all hung out at the same schools they hung out at the same McDonald's where he uh, found this young boy um, the first one where he found him was at the McDonald's where he picked up other kids because you know he used to frequent the McDonald's you know in a neighborhood by a local school in Chicago so um, this 17 year old boy he had ran into him at that same McDonald's where he had picked up other young girls. And then after that, after, you know, spending time with him and everything, they alleged that he had that boy um, bring him back other boys. Uh, he would, like, go out. I don't know if the boys were, like, his friends or if he would meet them in clubs or wherever, but he brought back other boys to R. Kelly and had them making all these films, making all these videos and all that stuff. Mm-mm-mm. I really think that he will always be a habitual offender, and I, I would hate to find out what the hell they're doing to him in jail. I would really hate to find out what they're doing to him in jail, I, because you know how they do those pedos. You know how they do those kids. But, um, I mean, those monsters, and I think he is a monster. I really do think he's a monster. You said, and those parents are sicker than him, fame and money. Child. There is no amount of money, no amount of money that would 
make me sell my child, sell my soul to the devil. Because that's what I believe he is. And that's what I believe he is. Lower than the devil. I really do. There's no way I could sell my soul, sell my child for any amount of money. And that's just like the girl that he was um urinating on. His uh father was uh he was playing the was it the drums or the guitar? I think it was the guitar. The father of that girl was playing the guitars in his uh band and he continued to work for him after they knew what he was doing to their daughter. So ain't no amount of money. And to make it so bad. I'm sure they were probably getting a good um pay, a good, you know, amount of money contractual for their services for being in his band, you know, for working for him and whatnot. But I'm sure they probably could have got a lot more money if they would have sued. Man. Mm mm mm. Mm mm. But yeah, the parents who the parents who knew, um, that's the thing. Some of the parents knew. Some of the parents didn't know. Some of them didn't know. So we definitely can't lump all the parents in together because I do not believe that all those parents knew. I don't. But there are some who did knew, and there were some who did um, get paid. You got to keep in mind. Keep in mind that a lot of the people, a lot of the parents, um, a lot of the parents who are not in court, whose children did not press charges, a lot of them were paid off. R. Kelly, okay, y'all know this man been broke for a minute, right? Y'all, before he even went to, uh, y'all, well, probably most of us, most of us, probably before he even got locked up this time around, like a year or so ago, was probably making more money than his ass because he was so broke from paying off so many people. When he got locked up, he didn't even have $100,000 to get himself out of jail. All those CDs, all those albums, all those concerts, all those tours, all I mean, all that stepping in the name of damn love, and he didn't even have a hundred thousand dollars. He didn't even have money to pay his wife Andrea child support. So we know before he went to jail this time around that we were probably making more money than his ass. I mean, yeah, he owned this house. He probably had a couple of cars, a couple of furs, some jewelry. Um, but other than that, what else did he have but a Big old, some big old, uh, big old gym bags full of, uh, videos of all the people he was recording. No, he was not good at money management. Just music. Just music. Just music. But, and, and you know what, Carrie? I think he probably would have been good at money management. Um, but he had to spend all his money, well, not all of it, but a lot of his money on paying people off. He was paying off a lot of people over the years. So as well as you manage your money, if you can't manage your morals and manage your sexual um, desires for younger people, then there's no way he would be able to keep any amount of money. Because I'm sure some of those people he was paying maybe fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, uh, uh, uh two hundred thousand. Ain't no telling how much money he was paying all those people. That you know the ones who did not end up in the courtroom. So some parents, some parents, I don't want to say they sold their kids. They did like get some money out of it. Me personally, I would have sued his ass in court, and then sued him for punitive damages as well. I would have hit them pockets. See, and that's the thing. Some parents, I believe, is kind of like even in some of the households um, in, in the hood, some of the uh, the uh, lower income um, households, uh, and even upper income. I'm just not going to say uh, us, us po folks. But the way I was uh, raised, a lot of my friends, family, um, associates, in the household, if something happened, they would just like sweep it under the rug. Now they might threaten the person, 
They might, your father and your uncles might beat up a person. They might ban them from coming over to the house or something like that. But in the end, nothing happened a lot of the times growing up. When it comes to predators in the family or, you know, in the circle or just somebody in the neighborhood or whatnot. Just like, just like when R. Kelly's mother um, took that $5,000 from the man in the neighborhood, the creepy man in the neighborhood who had, uh, took, who had taken advantage of R. Kelly when he was a young little boy, when he was like, how old was he? Um, I think he was like six or seven. He was like six or seven. And that was like the beginning of him, uh, of his abuse. And I think that if his mother would have took that man to court and actually press the charges and let the charges stick and let him get locked up, maybe R. Kelly would have had a different future than what ended up happening. But no, his mother took that $5,000 for that man. Now she did, they did beat the man up. They did press charges. He did go to jail and get locked up, but the man was able to convince R. Kelly's mother to accept $5,000 and drop the charges. So that's what happened. That's what happened. And then his own sister was molesting him and his brothers. And other family members was doing different things to people in the family. And they kind of just spin out of control when it came to R. Kelly. So yeah, I think his I think his future would have been a little bit different if 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 his mother would have made some different decisions early on, you know, in his younger life. And you said, oh yeah, he couldn't read. Yeah, he definitely couldn't read that very well. He definitely couldn't read that very well. You said, this is why these young people growing up shouldn't believe everything they see when they see these celebrities floss and all that. Oh, that glitter ain't gonna shine! Do you know how many times? I'm telling you, I used to sing with this uh, singing group called Nubian Voices when I was younger, when I was a teenager. And we were, I thought we were really good, but we didn't really go anywhere because some of our members ended up dropping out, getting into it with each other. Um, some of them got pregnant. You know, shit just happened. So, um, but yeah, I had I had dreams of becoming well-known, uh, famous, uh, being discovered by a celebrity or, you know, I had those dreams and ad admirations when I was younger. Um, but I never at that time realized or knew, I should say I never knew what goes on in the musical world and not just the musical world, but, but in, in, in the, uh, TV and entertainment movies, like all that stuff that some people deal with just to become famous, just to become a star. -er. You know, mm -mm. I, I, I'll pass, I'll pass, I'll pass. And, and maybe, maybe it just wasn't meant to be uh, for me or any of my singing group back then to make it because of a lot of stuff that goes on. Everything ain't meant to be. Everything is not meant to be. <clears throat> you said, oh, okay, never heard about the man. Yes, honey. If you check out um, Yoli B, if you check out the interviews that his brother did, his brother, the brother who, him and the brother who was both um, molested by their sister. If you check out the interviews that he did with Lifetime, he talked about that. He discussed that. And he said he thinks that's where it all went downhill. That was like the first time that there was a payoff for child abuse in R. Kelly's life. And that's why I say, I think if his mother would not have took that payoff, and drop that charges for the man. And it wasn't just him, Yoli B. It was the man was messing with all kinds of kids in the neighborhood. But when he got caught messing with R. Kelly and his brothers, the mothers, friends, uncles, whatever, they they whooped the man, they beat the they beat the brakes off that man. And then he ended up going to jail. But the man back then, you gotta remember too, this was back in the seventies. <clears throat> this was back in the seventies. Um five thousand dollars in the seventies that was probably in the seventies that was probably like fifty thousand in the seventies that probably would have been comparable to fifty thousand dollars back then five thousand dollars some people didn't make that much in a year in the seventies making three dollars or something an hour you know what i mean so his wife and they stayed in the hoods they stayed in the projects and his mother took that money yep yep it's documented it's documented 
But yeah, so you guys, I just, every time something spins off or every time something happens with Kells, you know, I've been following this uh, R. Kelly saga, surviving um, R. Kelly saga for um, a couple of years now. So every time something new pop off, I come and let you guys know um, <clears throat> my comments on it or my opinions on it. So that's all this video is about today. Um, but uh, yeah. So check the newspapers if you're interested. Check the online website. It's all over the place. He's facing more charges. Um, not only for uh, bribery, but also for sexual contact with underage boys. Not a boy, but boys. So, yeah. And the prosecutors are trying to get all this information presented to the jurors before they start. Because, you know, they're supposed to um, select the jurors um, in August. August 9th. That's next month. We only got like a few more weeks. You know, so they, they got like a few weeks to get all these charges, all this information put together so they can present it to the jurors when they start their jury selection. But yeah, among some of the boys, um, it was a 17-year-old boy and he was also an aspiring musician. Just like some of the other young people who he was with aspiring musician the 17 year old boy was an aspiring musician he let he met kelly at mcdonald's this was in 2006 of december um r kelly lady late like just like some of the other ones he later invited him to his chicago studio and then um basically basically what happened was he asked the boy what would you do to make it big, to be a star in the music business. What would you do? How far would you go? And that's when Kells propositioned him with sex. And they end up having sex. And then after that, the boy went out and he brought more boys to Kells. And of course, there was more porn. Because he was recording them, just like with some of the other younger ones and the women. He, he He's big on recording. Like, he had a recording room. He had, like, a studio in his house that was just for recording. It was, they said it was black. The, from the Lifetime Movie Network, Surviving R. Kelly uh, show, we learned that he kept the room dark. Really dark curtains so you couldn't see in and out. Um, he kept it really dark in the room and he had like all these cameras and tripods and video equipment and everything, um, that he had in his house. And that's where he made all his videos. But, yep. So there you go. There you go. And then as far as like the bribery, as far as the bribery, um, the little boy later, um, later down the line, down the years, uh, he had, at, he had, uh, approached that boy, the first boy, and told him to contact the jewelers and vouch that he was a good guy and that he really did, that did nothing wrong. Mm hmm Yep. Yep. And then again, like I said, he introduced that first boy, introduced Kells to more 16 and 17 year old boys who he also began, began a relationship with. So, child, I don't know what else is going to come down the pipelines for this man. It is so many charges, so many allegations, videotape footage. I mean, it's so much going on with him. But anyway, for some of y'all who still stepping in the name of love, I ain't judging y'all for still listening to his music because his music um sets apart from who he is or from what his actions were. I'm not gonna say who he is because a lot of us when we look at or when we listen to some of those uh, songs now, when we read some of those lyrics, like AJ Nothing But A Number, you, you look at that man like, <laughs> yeah, we know. AJ never been nothing but a number to your ass. We we know. <laughs> but yeah, you said you don't even play his music. I don't either. I don't either. And I try not to judge the people who do. Hey, sister. I try not to judge the people who do, but in this household, we haven't listened to an R. Kelly song, and I don't know how long. I don't know how long it's been since we listened to R. Kelly. Yes, but but sister already knew that he liked boys. Why? Because from the from the allegations from the ladies 
who participated in this um, Surviving R. Kelly series, they said that he was bisexual. A lot of people didn't know that R. Kelly was bisexual for years. He, he, a lot of people been knew that, that he was bisexual. But I always, I always, and sometimes I, I let it be known on here, on my shows, how I always was like, if he's bisexual, girls cannot be the only one that he's having sex with. It's no way. So I always kind of thought that it was going to be some little boys that was going to eventually come out. And here we have it. Here we have it. At least three of them. At least three of them. Nope, I did not read his book. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I didn't read his book, Carrie. Not saying I don't want to. I just, I just didn't. Yeah. He is a musical genius. He's a new, yeah, see, see, I've been following this story um, and the story of all the accusers for a long time. That's how I know a lot of this information. But yeah, if you don't really follow him and if you don't, watch all the interviews and you know all that kind of stuff then yeah you probably wouldn't know certain things like a lot of people didn't know that he was uh molested when he was like five or six by a old man in the neighborhood and that his mother was paid off five thousand dollars to drop the charges a lot of people don't know that but that was in the lifetime uh surviving r kelly uh series his brother told us that information so yep but yeah, that's all I got on this. I'm I, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my dinner. I made me some good old meatloaf, child. Homemade meatloaf, Woo, child. Matter of fact, I posted it on Facebook. Let me see if I can bring up the picture. I posted it on Facebook, honey. It's so good. Hold on, let me show y'all the pictures. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm going live again tonight because uh, Power, the new episode of Power came on today. And for those of you who got the Stars app on your phone or on your uh, computer, if you uh, pay for the Stars app, um, then you can like watch all the episodes early and you know all that kind of stuff. But if you have Stars, if you pay for the Stars show, you can watch like all the episodes. They come out at like midnight on Sunday night, so I was able to watch it um, today, because it doesn't actually really come on till 7, so it should be on right now, for the people who gotta watch it on cable. But, uh, yeah, child, here's my little old meatloaf. Here's my veggies, when I was cooking up my veggies, and I put all kind of veggies in mine, I always do. I put onions, bell peppers, uh, red peppers, celery. Um, I put that in my uh, meatloaf. And then that's, that's my uh, meatloaf after I shaped it up and everything. And then that's the final product, child. And I, and I uh, took me a little sliver. I uh, cut me a little sliver off <laughs> before I went live just to taste it. But yeah, so I gotta um, finish my dinner, um, and then I'll be back live. I think I'll make I don't, I don't know some simple some mashed potatoes and gravy and some um, some broccoli and cheese. That's all I'm gonna make with it today. But yeah, I did work earlier today. I did some overtime today. I worked overtime yesterday, so I figure meatloaf not too hard. Nothing too fancy for Sunday dinner. A uh, few simple sides since I have to do two shows today. And later tonight, for those of y'all who are uh, fans of Power, uh, we are on the book three, Power spinoff book three, which is Raising Canaan. And for those of y'all who've been enjoying that show, if you want to join me tonight at 9 p.m., we will be discussing the latest episode, which was called Reaping and Sowing. I thought it was really good. So meet me back here at 9 o'clock. I did post a, a notification. So if you got my notification bell hit, you'll get like the notification like 30 minutes before I go live. But on that note, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in for this R. Kelly update on more charges and possible bribery um, charges as well. Make sure you like and share the video. Subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. And always, always, always remain vigilant. Keep it safe. Be blessed.
and keep it hood. Bye. See you later, Karen.